Howdy folks, I'm Matt Literary Lady. Today is Thursday, May the 23rd. Time for Literary Tip Thursday. Today is part four in the Getting That Book Published in 2013 segments. And I'll recap, the first week was about getting your thoughts and your words out on paper. It was important to get your entire story out and just get it all out of your head and get it on paper so you can begin the process. The second week we talked about setting writing goals, whether they were words per day or time per day. And last week, which was the third week, we talked about establishing your publishing business, obtaining ISBN numbers and LCCN numbers. And this week we're going to briefly talk about proofreading versus editing. Now, as I always say to my clients, and I've been saying to you for a while now, if you've watched my videos in the past, never edit your own work. And there is a difference between proofreading and editing. When I say never edit your own work, hire an editor to be the final person before that book goes to print. It is important that you get that work edited and you don't do it yourself. And I'll give you an example here. If you look at this sentence here, it's a typical sentence, but imagine that it's an entire manuscript. If you are close to the work, you are going to miss, see the sentence now, you're going to miss that error in that sentence. And if it's an entire manuscript, you're more than likely going to miss a few errors. And especially in the case of stories that are true and you're close to the story, if you know the story, how it, how it happened, you will tend to miss errors because you are too close to that particular work. So in addition to doing your proofreading, it is very important that in the end, you hire a good editor to go over your work and an editor will go over your work a couple times, if not more, before that book actually goes to print. Now, what's the difference between, another difference between editing and proofreading? Proofreading, in my opinion, is for your purposes. That's once, once you have everything out on paper, you can go back and look and say, oh, wait a minute, I didn't mean to put this here, or I spelled this wrong and I meant this word, or I meant there and not there, T-H-E-I-R and not T-H-E-Y-R-E, -E. things like that you want to go back and, and, and catch. But it's important to hire an editor. One of the resources that I have uh, shared with you guys in the past is the Writer's, the Writer's Digest Market, which is the book I told you I get every couple of years. In the very beginning of that book, there is a section called, What Should I Charge or How Much Should I Charge? This is the source I use when I am charging my clients for work they're asking me to do. So I really would suggest you actually to get that book. But if you don't want to go out and buy that book, if you do a Google search on how much I should charge for editing, in the top five uh, search uh, returns, you will find that from the Writer's Digest. Um, I forget who the author is, but it's it's at the beginning of each writer's market every year. So get that and print it out. It's probably about 20 pages. So the next time you actually go and ask an editor how much they charge or a copy editor or a web designer or things like that, anything that, that's done freelance, you're not floored by, you, you charge how much, you know, you can look at this and say, oh, well, that person actually charges pretty good based on the average. Now, in this particular chart, there is a high, low, and average. Uh, and there's also per hour, per page, and per flat rate that you will find in this. So that's a good thing to have to and to be armed with when you do go and, and, and search out an editor to see how much they charge. Now, there's no right and wrong way for an editor to charge. For example, some may charge per page, some may charge per word, uh, some may just charge a flat rate up to, for example, I charge a flat rate up to 300 pages, and then after that, it's per page. Uh, after that. So it depends on the editor, but make sure you find a good editor. And the best way to find a good editor is word of mouth. You have tons of books around you. You are friends with authors and, and people in the industry on, online. Find out who they use and uh, Find out, get get some referrals, basically, and get some quotes. Don't just get one quote. Get a few quotes and find out what works best for you. And actually interview the editor, um, per se. Um, not drill the editor, because I guarantee you, they'll tell you, you know, <laughs> go away. But, 
you know, kind of ask some questions because you want to make sure your editor is a good fit with you. If you're the kind of person who needs an editor who's going to push you to make these changes and be the best writer, you may need a certain editor, whereas you might be a control freak and you don't want your editor telling you to do this and that. That person may not be the right person for you. So it's good that the editor and the writer actually have a good working relationship. Now, going back to proofreading, it is very important to proofread again, like I said before, just so you, for your benefit, so you can catch some changes that you may need to make. Once you have everything down on paper, you may be able to go back and say, hey, you know, I forgot to put this section in here. I forgot to do this, or I meant to use there, T-H-E-Y-R-E, or apostrophe R-E, and not T-H-E-I-R. And this is a, lot, a common problem a lot of people will use in their books. I find in editing that people will use lost instead of loss like I'm sorry for your loss in the event of the death of a, of a family member they'll put lost l-o-s-t and that's not correct it's l-o-s-s -S. so those type of things um, you want to go back and check and especially for those of you and not picking on you but for those of you with the southern dialect you do tend to use different words but in the same uh, the same aspect close to the same spelling um, Sorry, but no matter how Southern you are, there is still a right way to write a book. Now, I, um, as always, like to give you guys some resources. So I'm going to give you some proofreading resources. And these are also some resources that I use when editing. But for your purpose, some of the editing uh, resources that I use. And I'll, you'll always see me use this book. Always. The Chicago Manual Style. Whether I'm editing or whether I'm proofreading whatever if I have a question about something a placement of something this is a great tool to have and as I said in my previous video um, I don't buy it every year because this book cost me uh, 55 bucks and um, I could afford 55 bucks every year I just don't want to because not a whole lot changes and this is actually the uh, 15th uh, edition and they've come out with the 16th edition which is actually blue and um, I'll probably get the 17th edition uh, I just don't buy these type of books every year and then this is my Bible this should be your Bible your writing Bible not your regular Bible this should be your writing Bible so the Chicago manual style and as I said in my previous video every good writer should always have a good source and again this here I buy every other year I don't buy these every year and a lot of my books you will see I don't buy them every year it just doesn't make any sense and some of them I don't buy every other year it just depends on uh, my alerts on if how many words were added to the dictionary and how many were omitted and if there were not that many I, I just don't invest in another one and this I of course want a, a shiny new toy and I consider these my toys and my babies. So a thesaurus is a good thing to have. And then, of course, no one ever, good writer, bad writer, writer, student, whatever, no one should be without a good dictionary. And I bought this one last year. This one cost me 27 bucks. But, of course, Amazon is your friend. I always say Google is your friend, but Amazon is your friend, too. You can always get these kind of books on sale. Now, I will say that Writer's Digest does sell their own books, their writing books, and they're good books. Uh, but they're, in my opinion, a little pricey. So do a search for them on Amazon and you can almost almost always find a discount. So always have a good dictionary. And another one I, I have is called Self-Editing for Fiction Writers. How to Edit Yourself into Print. And I believe another edition has uh, come out of this book. Uh, but go on Amazon, and this is where I got this one here, go on Amazon and look for this book. It has a lot of great tips on what to look for or what you normally wouldn't look, to for, look for. It talks about dialogue, uh, grammar, uh, the southern dialect and other dialects and things like that. So this is a good book to have. Um, this is just an additional resource. I like to go peruse bookstores or go on Amazon and, and look for things that can help me become a better writer and a better, better editor as well as, well as a ghostwriter. And I want to give a shout out to one of my writer friends. Uh, many of you may know her. Her name is Chris Reardon. Chris is a mystery uh, thriller writer, per se, or, or a uh, murder mystery writer. And she wrote a book called Don't Sabotage Your Submission. And it has a lot of great tips in here, like discover why 90% of fiction manuscripts are rejected. 
learn how to spot clues of average writing, and see different uh, editor analysis. Some editors will put your work through analysis uh, software, or they'll just have a check sheet to see if your manuscript fits that, and that's how they usually start out, and then they'll go through editing your work. And like, like I said, a good editor will edit your work at least twice, and... Uh, and, and maybe even more. But this is just a tip from my good friend Chris Reardon, who actually lives here in North Carolina. But those are just briefly some uh, resources that will help you. So, we're at the point now where we've gotten everything on paper, we've set that writing goal, and we've achieved that writing goal. We've established our publishing business, we've uh, obtained our ISBN numbers in sets of 10 at least, and our LCCN number. So now we're going back over what we've gotten on paper or on the computer or the typewriter or however you do your writing. And we're going back over it and we're, we're uh, proofreading it. And once we proofread it, we're going to send it to an editor. Now I will say this. Don't go over your head or get stressed out about proofreading your work. Some people don't even proofread their work. Because nine times out of ten, especially if you're the personality who needs an editor who's going to push you and draw out of you and really have that kind of hands-on relationship with you, I can guarantee you that editor's going to, going to send some work back to you anyway. So while you're stressing out about how this is not this, that, this, and that, the editor is going to send information back to you saying, hey, this needs to be rewritten. Keep this in mind. Consider this. Don't use this. Use this. Uh, and um, you will go from there. So, again, and I cannot stress this enough, please hire a good editor. And you can research that online. You can find resources through, uh, they have editing associations, writer associations. But the best way is word of mouth. You have books around you that you read. You're Facebook friends with lots of authors and other people in the industry. Find out, pay attention, ask questions on how you can find you a good editor and make sure that editor goes over your work and edits your work before you send it the final product to the printer. Well, hopefully you'll join us next week or join me next week. And I'm not quite sure what I'll talk about yet, but you will find out next week. <laughs> well, I'm that Literary Lady and this has been Literary Tip Thursday. Have a great weekend and happy Memorial Day. Be safe. Drive safe and enjoy family. Thank you.